technologies. So uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please be very welcome to um, ask them in the chat or just to communicate uh, with me and share any kind of ideas you have about this topic. So let's begin. Uh, if you are here, it means that you are interested in a strategy, maybe you have used some strategies, maybe you tried to create uh, the strategy of your own. Uh, various scenarios are possible here. And uh, we often hear a lot that a trader needs to have a strategy. Um, and this topic is widely discussed in kind of financial literature. Although, um, of course, we see a lot of general stuff like uh, strategy is good because you need to plan everything um, and so on. Uh, but this information kind of lacks details and lacks um, the how to act scenario. So today we will um, try to amend that and to go through the list of steps uh, you need to go through in order to um, create a trading strategy that will work or uh, in order to check whether a strategy you have discovered somewhere or someone had advised you is really worth trading. So that is the goal. Um, the question sometimes is, uh, does a trader need a strategy or is it, pos it is possible to just um, act discreetly every time to choose the parameters of your trade, every time use some different uh, techniques of market analysis. Well, uh, that is certainly possible. Some traders do that. Uh, they trade without a system, but just um, adjust to the situation and to the market. However, a strategy does offer some advantages. And the most obvious reasons are here at this slide. They are firstly the fact that a strategy reduces the impact of emotions because we do have um, something to rely on. We do have a plan of action and um, a strategy that has entry and exit rules. Well, it can comfort you. It can give you guidance. So, of course, you won't fear, feel as unprotected as it is possible to feel while just um, simply trading without strategy. A strategy also reduces the time for market analysis because um, if a strategy is based on technical analysis, it already implies that uh, you have some specific um, rules uh, you will use some specific indicators which will help you to filter out good signals from the market noise and from the bad signals. So um, you don't need to waste time thinking what else you can use and whether you have enough um, analytical tools to make your decision because that is already included in a strategy. And uh, the third reason reason is that you can test a strategy, you can check uh, whether it works or not on uh, either backtest it or uh, test it on some demo account or with a small amount of money. And um, you will have a scheme that will produce some kind of expected rate of return. Of course, we can't um, say that a strategy will always bring some um, certain result, but more or less you will get an understanding of uh, whether this strategy is uh, worth it or not. And uh, well, if a strategy is um, combined of good elements, it means that it will likely bring um, return if you use some sensible risk management techniques. We will talk about this today a bit more. Now uh, let's uh, get to some um, recommendations and um, go through the steps of thinking about a trading strategy and um, choosing or creating a trading strategy. So uh, steps 
or mm, start with some general stuff and then we move to more detailed things but of course it is need to start with some questions to yourself just to narrow down the uh, wide range of possibilities that exist and um, it is necessary to understand that a strategy should have some specifics it cannot be aimed on uh, any kind of market situation and on everything. That kind of strategy doesn't exist. And although traders do uh, look for some holy grails in uh, terms of strategies, um, they think that uh, if they have a strategy, it will answer all the questions and solve the problems. However, the reality is not so. And uh, a strategy should kind of be aimed at some specific thing about the market in order to slice that uh, profit from that idea. So firstly, you need to ask yourself questions and kind of understand uh, what is your trading style? What um, are your resources in terms of time in the first place? So the first question is, how much time are you willing to spend on trading? And um, here your answer will uh, influence so much because uh, if you have a lot of time, you will be able to devote several hours a day for trading. Then um, you will be able to spend time controlling your trades manually. You will be able to scalp, uh, to do a lot of trades, to monitor everything. Uh, so trade some short term time frames. If you have only several hours a week, of course, uh, it would be um, more sensible to spend them on market analysis, to plan a couple of swing trades uh, or some longer term position trades so that, um, well, uh, you spend this several times a week in the most efficient manner and um, create for yourself an opportunity to get um, profit, more profit from some longer term trade. So time is an important resource. Then how long uh, do you hold a typical trade that also is related to the questions because scalpers um, hold a trade open for minutes or so, while uh, swing traders um, and position traders, of course, uh, keep trades open for hours, days, sometimes weeks. So that matters and um, a strategy that is fit for scalping certainly won't do for swing trading or position trading. Um, are you tolerant to stress? Stress um, is related to uh, scalping and intraday trading strategies more than uh, those of um, swing trading and position trading because the longer term strategies, it is implied that you can analyze the market, set your levels automatically, and then go do some other stuff. So the trade is there, but you are not sitting in front of the screen and um, worrying too much about that. So all these questions kind of determine uh, where you should look at which strategies more uh, longer term strategies or short term strategies. Next, uh, market conditions um, and markets. So um, which instruments uh, do you want to trade? Stocks, currencies, commodities. Um, there are some differences here. Of course, we can say that technical analysis everywhere is more or less similar, but the markets certainly differ in terms of volatility and in terms of fundamental factors which appear in the form of news and uh, disrupt our trades uh, or sometimes push uh, the price in the right direction. So certainly these things uh, do make an impact. And the most important thing uh, here, um, well, uh, market conditions, which would you like to aim at with this particular strategy? Because um, you will need different kinds of technical and analytical tools for um, trends on the one hand, 
and poor range-bound markets on the other hand. The tools, the approach will be different. You can, if you are a trend trader, there you can also have a variety of options. Um, of course, the major scenario which is uh, most recommended everywhere is to trade in the direction of a trend. But uh, there are traders who have strategies and who prefer acting counter trend. And it's abundantly clear that uh, strategies for these two types of trading will be very different. Finally, very specific to breakout trading, then we aim um, to trade on breakout of some important support and resistance levels. And this is a particular case uh, in the market that, well, doesn't really fit into other categories here. So I think here are the four main um, groups of market conditions we need to um, take into account. And if, for example, we um, create a strategy which is aimed for range trading, uh, it will be specifically aimed for um, getting the most of the ranges. If the market is trending, fine, you can um, switch to another separate strategy with separate entry rules, um, elements, uh, and so on. But in a range, you will have this kind of range strategy. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is, uh, if you spend a lot of time trading, it is wise to uh, adjust your strategy uh, to different market conditions and thus have um, several strategies to choose from. So the next uh, steps uh, we will make um, will be choosing the tools. And here is one of the most important part of the action, um, in my opinion. Uh, because uh, a correct set of tools, well, it is the foundation of this strategy's success. And, um, well, the main distinctions it is possible to make is that we can um, look at price action in the first place, we can look at technical indicators in the second place, or uh, vice versa. Um, and if we speak about technical indicators, it is necessary to understand that, firstly, there are different groups of technical indicators, trend indicators, oscillators, volume indicators, um, specific group of Bill Williams indicators, for example. And um, it is obvious that trend indicators are kind of aimed for trend trading. Oscillators have use in trends and in ranges. Um, but if we create a strategy and mm, we use several indicators in this strategy, it is recommended not to use uh, the mm, indicators from the same group. Maybe uh, in some cases, but in most cases, it is wise to combine indicators from several categories. Um, it is also clear that uh, one indicator won't be able to produce um, any kind of reliable signal because, um, well, um, there is no perfect indicator in nature. I haven't heard about it, and I think no one uh, really did. So um, it is necessary to use several indicators so that we could get a confirmation of a technical signal. And um, if you check a trading strategy or create one of your own, um, you need to understand the logic of the indicators in order to uh, create the best combination. So um, that would allow you to get the most out of the market. For example, if we take um, stochastic indicator, um, stochastic oscillator, it would go well with um, moving averages, for example, Heiken Ashi um, kind of chart um, with alligator indicator, for example. So um, 
to combine stochastics and momentum or stochastics and RSI would be kind of pointless because they are similar and you will be just um, judging the same aspect of the market while combining different tools will uh, improve the system's uh, reliability. So that should be taken into account. A question here, is the webinar being recorded? Yes, and um, after it ends, it will appear at Tradimo YouTube channel. So if you want, you will be able to rewatch it. So uh, price action is also um, kind of uh, important and it is a primary thing. The price, after all, is uh, something the indicators analyze as well. So the price is the source of everything. And um, well, it is wise to monitor different candlestick patterns, chart patterns. And uh, nowadays, a software for trading allows us to use uh, some custom indicators and um, advisors which can um, alert us about some price action patterns. So um, that is also possible or um, if you have a look at some, well, big time frames and even not so big time frames, well, um, if you are able to recognize easily some patterns, well, have a strategy which uh, will allow you to add some element there and add the rules of risk management and trade on the chart patterns and candlestick patterns as well. Probably you will combine um, candlestick patterns with Bollinger Bands, for example. That can be a good foundation of a strategy. Next thing is fundamentals. How about fundamentals? Um, in my opinion, it is not uh, wise to ignore fundamentals, even if uh, you are creating a technical uh, trading strategy with these steps. Because, um, well, if you trade in a very short term, certainly you will need to be aware of economic releases, which um, have an impact on the instrument you trade, if it is a currency pair than uh, a lot of economic releases. If it is a stock, then um, probably releases um, of the US economic data or company earnings. Uh, like now we have earnings season in the United States and it does affect stocks so that you are not caught off guard by not knowing that there is something important there. Um, um, there is a particular topic how to trade on the news and uh, your trading strategy may be related to news. Um, you can either trade on a pullback, for example, after the market reacts to the news or on expectations uh, or there are uh, other options there. So it can have a closer relation to fundamentals. And um, you need to decide whether you will use fundamentals somehow or try to avoid it. So if there is an important announcement in economic calendar, you just not trade at that time because your strategy is so technically based so that you don't want to derail this technical reasoning of a strategy by uh, some uh, fundamental burst that may happen in the market. Mm. That was about fundamentals. I hope I didn't forget anything I wanted to say here. Well, if um, if I remember, I'll tell you next. So um, we are getting to the middle here of the steps. And um, the most important thing is that a strategy has structure so it is not a kind of a vague thing it has two important elements which are called the setup um, and the trigger so the setup is a kind of set of conditions that make trade possible so if we need to make an analogy 
it is um, the right weather, um, sunny weather to go outside. So um, some things which are necessary, but which um, don't mean that we should open a trade just immediately. We see that the conditions are okay. So um, the setup in most general um, terms, it may be, for example, an uptrending market. Maybe some more details about that. Um, so some indicators may be included in the setup which um, allow you to see that conditions are favorable. So maybe it's, um, I don't know, um, if we take into account, well, let's take the simplest thing. The price is above the moving average, the moving average is rising, and the price um, rebounded from the moving average, so touched it, and then went higher. So it is a kind of positive set up involving one indicator. The trigger is the entry rule, which uh, implies that when we see the trigger, we do enter the market. It may be some other indicators or two indicators. Um, maybe they are on the same time frame, maybe not. So maybe this is uh, related to price action and to some support as we resistance levels you see on the chart, but this is um, what filters out all um, the signals uh, the setup gives and allows us to um, choose only some of those signals uh, so that um, our trades are of better quality. So uh, setup and a trigger, they may be cre creative we may, may consist of different uh, technical and fundamental things we have discussed. Um, you need to choose these things wisely. Uh, reading through the descriptions of the indicators, combining several indicators which are different. Next thing, um, things here. Uh, of course, we need to pay a lot of attention to risk management parameters. And well, um, I recommend you choose some um, position size for a trading strategy, which is more or less constant for some period of time at least, uh, so that uh, your results are consistent. And uh, the position size, well, it um, is different, um, but in no case it is recommended to risk more than 10% of your account in one trade. Uh, the better you know, position sizes are something around um, 2% or 5%, even 1% sometimes. Um, you can have a constant amount um, as your position size. You can uh, have um, a changeable account size of position depending on the percent of your equity you want to trade. So uh, something like that. I usually go uh, in my trading with two, maybe three percent. Of course, 10 percent is um, immense. But actually, if um, I recently saw a couple of examples in some uh, on some website, explaining these uh, things and well they had some crazy things uh, like um, I don't know even bigger position size like 50% was the, in their calculations and I just what <laughs> guys you are crazy so well um, that is up to you of course what to choose but uh, it is clear that um, if you are not greedy and moderate in your position sizing, um, you will have more chances to get um, decent trades than if you take uh, a lot on one trade. So something like that. Stop losses, take profits um, should be included in a strategy. And here, yeah, 
um, if it is a strategy, it is called the strategy not for without a reason. So um, if uh, you have uh, developed a rule or if a strategy includes a rule, um, try to go with it and not to change uh, the values of stop losses or take profits in every trade because this way it won't be a strategy. It will be, I don't know, just random trading. Risk reward ratio, I always include it in uh, presentations when I speak about stop losses and take profits because um, I think that it is very important to uh, make sure that you have this thing at your advantage and that your reward in a trade um, increases your risk so that um, you are able to stay uh, with profit as you make many trades. Uh, it is important. So uh, define the risk reward ratio for a trade and if it is breakout trading, for example, which is a kind of risky thing, uh, more risky thing than um, just uh, buying at support in an uptrend. Um, in this case, uh, of course, um, risk should be as small as possible and reward should be bigger compared to risk because uh, when we trade breakout, we assume that the market will uh, make a big movement when it uh, takes, uh, when it goes through uh, a support or resistance level. So I don't know, something like um, one to five may be okay for um, for that kind of uh, trading. In uh, trend trading, there can be more moderate risk reward ratios, but still uh, a reward should be much bigger than a risk. In range trading, um, well, um, there may be some different situation. So um, next thing, it is necessary to write down the rules of a strategy. It is, um, I think, uh, an important um, step uh, that you acknowledge this strategy, that you will uh, use it, that um, you don't forget it because, well, it is kind of um, possible, of course, to keep that in mind, but it is better to write things down somewhere. And the ideal situation is that you make notes of the trades you make in line with the strategy um, to keep things in check and see how the things um, really develop. Um, back test the strategy here I have on a demo account. Well, um, it is certainly a good thing to do because, uh, well, um, the strategy, even if you are an experienced person and you see that the strategy seems okay on the first side because it is, um, it combines some good elements which seem okay together. Mm, Try to backtest it. Um, I don't know. It is possible to do manual backtesting. It is possible to do um, to automate this thing if you know how to do it. Some programming skills, uh, these things. But uh, definitely, you should um, uh, backtest it on historical data and then test it on demo account in uh, live trading. Uh, because uh, the results may be different and even um, some small um, differences um, you cannot predict otherwise will be important there. So as it is the question of um, precision, the question of money, um, only this kind of testing will allow you to really see the efficiency of a strategy. And finally, we arrive to the final points. You start using a strategy on a live account if you see that um, it um, was fine when you tested it. But um, of course, that doesn't mean that um, you should stop advancing in uh, becoming a better trader. 
um, no way because uh, from time to time you will probably need to adjust the strategy to change some settings of indicators maybe to uh, change the elements of a strategy we know that market changes uh, it changes in fundamental way how uh, the um, prices behave relative to some triggers uh, by fundamental factors so um, the market changes a lot and uh, it is always necessary to change and adjust a strategy we know that um, there is a big problem with different uh, trading robots and algorithms because uh, once you have if you bought it somewhere for example um, it may just be out of um, order in some time because it just doesn't follow um, the changing market in the right way so, of course, this is not a permanent solution and uh, always there is potential for improvement. In addition, uh, to make a conclusion about a trading strategy, um, it is not uh, recommended to, to uh, kind of perceive a strategy as uh, the thing which will do all the decisions and all the things for you of course, if you decided to use a strategy, you should follow the rules as long as you adhere to that strategy. But um, ultimately, you make this kind of decision and it is uh, always necessary to be on the lookout for some further instruments you can use to improve your uh, trading performance. So uh, this is it. So um, if we go through the points once again, remember that we started with um, asking yourself about the type of trader you are, uh, what market conditions you want to trade, which instruments, uh, which um, are the rules of uh, entry to the market, and which are the rules of exit, like take profits, stop losses, and risk management. And, uh, well, uh, some additional things we uh, need to um, do, like testing of a strategy. This is a system, and um, don't underestimate the importance of uh, the points. So um, it is really important to check every step one by one. Um, if you have a strategy you found somewhere, check it according to the points and steps. If you create a strategy of your own, do the same thing. And um, that kind of analysis will help you to find a good trading strategy. So um, if you do have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. In the meantime, I remind you about the premium uh, possibilities which Tradimo provides and um, here you can um, get access to some personalized learning support and um, different courses and trading signals so feel free to check uh, learn.tradimo.com slash premium maybe it will interest you in the meantime, I'd like to uh, invite you to the next webinar, which will take place on Friday, and we'll take about we'll talk about trading in ranges. So the indicators to use uh, in ranges, and well, how things go, what are the peculiarities related to that kind of trading things. So uh, thank you for your attention today. The recording will be there. And um, see you at the next webinar with Trading Model.